Now, for this video, I'm going to intentionally leave out a lot of famous exploits, like the Crypt Blood incident and the Lich King platform controversy, and mainly focus on more lesser known exploits. Number 10, Princess Huhara. Sometimes, when bosses are first put into the game, they might have a spell or two that can be spell reflected. This can either be a big deal, like almost one-shotting the boss, i.e. Sinestra, or a minor thing, like reflecting back a shadow bolt or some shit. But Princess Huharan took this to a whole new level. What some guilds would do was go out and farm tokens to buy the Sheen of Zanza, a flask that had a very high chance to reflect all spells that the player took at the time. Today, it's only like a 3% chance or something. But with everyone in the raid using this elixir, Huharan would poison herself with the debuff she put on the entire raid, and snack it to its max duration of 99 stacks pretty quickly and then die within a few seconds, completely nullifying the intended design of the fight of having everyone stack nature resistance, and you know, dying really fast. Speaking of resistances, number 9, Ragnaros. There was an ad called Scar Shield Spellbinder in Blackrock Spire, who could put out a buff that gave 75 fire resist for an hour. If a priest mind controlled the ad, they could give everyone in the raid the buff, and 75 fire resist was a huge boost in survivability in Ragnaros, or any boss with fire damage, and was widely considered worth it to go through the trouble of mind controlling the ad to get the buff. Blizzard themselves, however, didn't really see it as an exploit. This is a creative use of game mechanics, not an exploit. It wouldn't be on the mind control options if we didn't intend for it to be there. Funny, isn't it? How these spellcasters are located right inside an instance that's very, very close to two raid dungeons where fire resistance plays a big role. Hmm? Although, other clever use of game mechanics were considered exploits by Blizzard. Void Reaver had a mind controllable ad in his room that could blast down the boss by itself very quickly. When Insidia were working on hard mode Hodir when it was considered mathematically impossible, they had their mages spell still the pollinate buff from Freya's trash mobs to get the kill. Which was in the next room, and Blizzard also considered this an exploit. But they did agree later that Hodir was impossible to nerf it shortly after the exploit. Number 8, Atremedes. Atremedes was a boss who was exploited pretty regularly by pretty much everyone for nearly a month before Blizzard fixed it. The exploit was simple. Kite Atremedes into the doorway that leads to the room and ignore phase 1 mechanics. Now, I actually go over Atremedes' exploits in my top 10 glitches raid boss video, so I'll add a small little Onyxia exploit at number 8 as well. During Onyxia's third phase, she would periodically fear the whole raid, and people would take damage from the little fire cracks in the ground. But there were some ledges in the room where you could just wall jump to and not take any damage, significantly lowering the total raid damage for the players able to stay in the wall and DPS or heal. Number 7, the Volastra's Mind Vision Exploit. Volastraz had a mechanic where he'd cast a buff on the players that gave them infinite resources, a damage boost, and instant cast spells. But you would also lose 5% of your maximum health every second until you died 20 seconds later. This caused problems for tanks who got the debuff. As you couldn't taunt the boss and had to have like 5 tanks get threats simultaneously to be next in line if the tank got chosen, this is where the exploit comes in. You see, back in vanilla, players and bosses had a debuff limit of about 16. Once a debuff was applied past 16, the game would simply drop off whichever debuff was put up first. So, if a tank got chosen for burning adrenaline, they'd do all they could to get debuffs on themselves to drop the buff. Someone would bandage the tank, and all the priests would use Mind Vision, a spell that allows you to look through the target's player's eyes. With enough priests, you could simply fill up the debuff slots of the tank and just make the burning adrenaline debuff fall off. This was such a big deal that players actually got to bring Shadow Priest to the raid, which was something that didn't happen in vanilla and made the fight a lot easier. Number 6, Cthune Stomach Exploit. This exploit is very similar to the Mind Vision exploit I just talked about, except this one required a rare pet called the Disgusting Oozling. The Oozling gives you a little 20 nature resistance debuff while it's out that turns you green. If you made a macro to spam summon the pet, you could fill up your debuff slots and make any debuff fall off. Inside Cthune's stomach, he puts a stacking debuff on you that will slowly kill you if you stay inside too long. With the Oozling, you could just keep pushing the debuff off entirely and stay in the stomach forever and DPS the tentacles that made Cthune take more damage. Technically, this strat could be used on Volastraz as well. But the Oozling was a very hard to get pet, so it was easier to just get more priests in the raid and then farm oozes in the Plaguelands for a couple weeks. Number 5, Hans and Franz. Now, this exploit was actually really hard to find any information on, 
since it was mostly exploited by Chinese servers, but was widely exploited during its short run. The exploit was to basically have the tank tank the boss with its back close to the platform, and have a rogue shadow step the boss to end up on the platform behind the boss. Then everyone in the raid would just wipe while the rogue vanished. The rogue would then mass res everyone onto the platform and they just do the boss from there, essentially ignoring all the mechanics of the fight. Number 4, Hakkar the Soul Flayer. And no, I'm not talking about the Corrupted Blood incident. Hakkar has another, less famous exploit that gets overshadowed. Hakkar would periodically cast the Blood Funnel ability on the raid, stealing health from the raid and healing. There were two ways to exploit this ability. One was to get debuffs from the Serpent adds in the raid and have Hakkar poison himself when he sucked your blood. Which, I might add, is actually a really cool spell interaction. Or, you could simply move before it was cast. If you moved, and stayed moving before and during Blood Funnel, it just straight up didn't work. No damage to the raid, no healing to Hakkar, making the fight a whole hell of a lot easier. And all it required was the raid run around in circles in unison every once in a while for 10 seconds. Number 3, Soul Stones. Now, this one isn't really confined to a certain boss, and more to Soul Stones as a whole. Basically, what top raids would do to avoid annoying mechanics or work on hard bosses was to have everyone in the raid level a Warlock alt to level 18 to learn Soul Stone. Then, they would have their Warlock alts put a Soul Stone on every single person in the raid, essentially giving everyone a second chance at life. It wasn't the ideal situation for mana-based classes since you didn't come back at full health and mana, but being able to come back at all was still better than being dead. Blizzard did not like whole raid soul stones and tried many different methods to discourage guilds from doing it, but this exploit stayed around all the way until Wrath of the Lich King. It was used so often and by so many guilds for so long that people saw it as more of an inconvenient way of doing bosses rather than an exploit, since it would take forever to soul stone everyone for every attempt. Number 2, the Dragon Soul Raid Finder exploit. When Raid Finder was first introduced during the Dragon Soul Raid, it worked a little differently than it does today. Raid Finder in its first form was basically an easier version of normal mode cut up into two parts that could be queued up through the in-game Dungeon Finder. This meant the gear was all the same as normal and heroic, just of lower item level. The thing is though, this meant the class set bonuses were the same as well. And the four set bonuses in Dragon Souls were practically needed to do some of the heroic fights, as they were all very powerful for every class, especially tanks. The four set bonus for tanks basically turned one of their defensive cooldowns into a raid wide cooldown, which most of the fights needed to get past certain phases. Now, here's where the exploit comes in. If everyone hit pass on loot instead of rolling need or greed, you could then zone out and back in and loot the bosses if you had killed it in a normal raid and everyone could lose the boss even if they had already gotten gear from it that week. What this meant was you could gear up an entire raid in full LFR gear in one week, including those sweet, sweet overpowered 4 set bonuses, and many top guilds did just that. Blizzard took a few weeks to fix this exploit and banned all the high profile guilds that took advantage of the exploit for 8 days, and took away the exploited gear, including Paragon, right before heroic modes opened giving all the guilds that took part in the cheating a huge disadvantage in the race for World First. And finally, number one, the AQ Floor Exploit. Now, this is the only exploit on here that got the guilds caught permanently banned. In vanilla, you could alter some of your in-game files to look like other models. So then, if you wanted to play a dwarf priest for the sweet racial, but wanted to look like a human or whatever, you could. What this guild did was replace the files for the stairs at the entrance to AQ40, into a smaller model like a chicken, allowing the raid to jump down straight to Cthulhu and skip the rest of the instance and trash altogether. The rest of the exploits on this list were done through in-game means, but this one involved actually altering the game files themselves, so it was treated a lot harsher than guilds being caught for spell stealing flower power. I also wanted to add a little bug that existed in Cataclysm with the bug trial in AQ40. If you tamed the blue Silithid, put all of its talent points in during the fight, and had it kill Vem, the pinkish bug, it would actually get the vengeance buff Vem cast upon death, increasing its damage by 100% and attack speed by 150%. This buff only lasted 10 minutes though, but since the fight has 3 bugs, you could simply just reset the fight and tame as many buffed up bugs as you wanted. Up to 30 I think was the stable slot limit at the time. Some of the earliest videos on my channel before I started making videos regularly have me taming one of these Silithids and getting the buff and using it on a target dummy. 
This super buffed pet was a lot of fun to use in Firelands. I was easily doing two times more damage than the second highest DPS when it was still a thing. This little exploit was fixed shortly after I found out about it though, but it's one of the few times I actually got to experience and use one of the game's beneficial glitches. And that's it for this video. Honorable mentions go out to the more famous exploits I did not cover, like the Yogg Zero Evading exploit, Lich King Platform Regrowing exploit, Kazakh Wreck Bomb, and the Corrupted Blood incident, all of which I didn't feature because there's a million and one videos talking about all of them already. I cover most of them in my Top 10 Hardest Raid Bosses video, so you can just check that out if you want. There should be a link on screen to go to it.